Hey, this is Jared Cochran with Family Church. Welcome to our podcast. I'm excited that you're here. I hope that God moves through this message to reach you so he can move through your life. Be sure to share and subscribe so that we can reach the world with God's word. Enjoy the message. Welcome back to another welcome interesting wonderful Wednesday I'm trying to find a new thing <laughs> to say uh, where's my announcements let us know where you're watching from uh, we're glad to have you back on this Wednesday as you get ready to brave whatever potential weather we may or may not have here in Florida but uh, <laughs> yeah Kelsey's fun was on 20 percent she told me she's at softball. Uh, with Carolyn, but uh, yeah, let us know where you're watching from before we get going. Just the announcements, real quick. Um, we still have the family care volunteer sign is up under the uh, the sign up thing under the announce. It's really going well. Events, yeah, that's turning up to be really good. Um, and then this Friday, September 27th, is the Bring a Board Family Night, and all of these are on our website, uh, familychurch.social/events. Uh, and basically, that is going. <coughs> excuse me, to be um, bringing any type, any type of food board. Uh, Kelsey was looking. Uh, I know uh, Amanda Mitch's wife was talking about some frosting board. Well, I don't even know what that is. I don't know either, but I said I wanted to see it. So. <laughs> I only I could picture is a bunch of frosting uh, on a board, and I'll you just have spoon it. <laughs> it's out. a big, big plate of diabetes. Amanda, if you happen to see us, tell us what a frosting board is. I'm sure they'll be on unless they're. Finally Mitch said tabletop the s'mores, so I don't know what. Yeah, that he means. sent me the picture with that. That looked pretty interesting, and we have something like that too for camping. But so is it a board and board games? Board and board games. Okay. I posted the picture. Um, We've got two different things of Jumanji. Mm -hmm. uh, the kids always love to play, but they had one that like looks like the old, like the movie one where it opens up and the center thing you can push and it lights up. So it's a lot of fun. Don't play it. And then there's other little, yeah, <laughs> there's other little um, Friday night little games and all that. So I'll see what we'll bring. But that's Friday night to bring your own board board games and. Uh, and, uh, that won't, we won't food. have any problem with the storm for that. Uh, Friday, no. it'll be already gone up into Georgia. So, yeah, it'll be it'll be done by. Happy then. to have you all with us. I see uh, connect Kathy Murray from up in Sandy Ridge, North Carolina. Glad to have you there. And yes, my heart has gone back to normal rhythm after signing. Uh, a momentary blurb on that: we we own sixty acres of land. Finally, we own it. We own it. We own it. Um, signed the papers a couple days ago, and uh, it is ours. Now the work starts. Now the work starts. I, I stopped by there uh, after picking up horse feed today and mm -hmm. just prayed over it. And then that's when I took that picture and put it on my that's Facebook. That's so important. It'll Everybody, be, uh, interesting to see. Start it praying now because the adversity that we've been facing is real, and the the struggle. It was a nine month ordeal to, to get all that that's done lot, and get all the paperwork a lot of process. done. process. Long process and now the, the, the wheels are in motion and um, it's exciting. Uh, sat in a room full of people signing those papers and, and, and people who are in real estate and in the know saying that that was a tremendous move. Uh, yeah, they're all saying the same blessing. thing. As, I mean that's like our house. Uh, the, the amount of land for the money that we got it for it was just totally God. There was no re I mean, it was on the market for over a yeah. year. So the developments that are coming out there, uh, the things that are happening all around that, in the next 5, 10, 15 years, it will be amazing what happens going west on 207. So once again, in, in our 39-year history, God has, it looks like, done a miracle and miraculously positioned us to be right in the right place at the right time. It's an amazing thing how this whole thing has happened, and to God be the glory. Uh, you know, and let me clarify, a thing while I got a moment, while I got everybody here before we dive into the sermon. Um, you know, wherever there is opportunity, there's always adversity. Uh, and there's been some adversity and, and, and a silly little thing that came up that someone was talking about, and I'll just go ahead and deal with it now, and we'll deal with it Sunday again, <laughs> was that, um, well, who owns it? Well, is that is that the Cochran's that own that now? Let's put that camel to bed. 
since 1986, this church has been a 501c3 corporation, which means that we are incorporated under the state of Florida non-taxed laws. What that means is that no one owns any of this. People have thought for years that the Kathy and I owned all of this. We do not. We never have. It's, it's always owned by the membership. So if you're a member of Family Church, you own this. This is yours. That's when we say, when we correct people when they say your church and they say, no, our church, it's our church. We own all of this it's members together. None of us can profit from it if the church were to dissolve. None of us could benefit from it. It has to be given to another nonprofit corporation. So there is no asset here owned by anyone other than what we have that is owned by us in membership. And people talking that, that dog about no accountability. Uh, that is not true. That is not true at all. We are audited every year annually. We are audited financially. We audit and we are audited by a CPA. And we have a six member church board. Who some of our people don't even know that. We keep that very quiet because the people that are on that board don't want their names out. They don't want any recognition. They don't want to be bothered by it, but they give us accountability for it. So I just wanted to put that camel to bed before we even get started tonight. Thank you for praying. Thank you for giving. Uh, everyone who is online that prays for us and gives to, to what we're doing here, thank you so much. Keep it up. And that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> I thought that was going a different direction. <laughs> uh, no, no, that's not me. That's well, you. I'm that's, always. I, it's the stereotypical, you know, the 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 mindset of the world um, that you know the pastors they're just in it for the yes. money, you know, um, and all that. We don't even have a retirement. Yeah, You know, corporations, when they hire a CEO and that kind of thing, they put retirement measures in place in the church. The church has never done that. When you finish ministry, they say thank you. <laughs> and then you're gone. God bless you. <laughs> we'll see and you in the heaven. next person steps good luck. in. Thankfully, in our case, it's you. <laughs> yeah. So God is good. It's, I'm looking forward to see it come together. And, and nine months to... That happened pretty quick. ...is not, not as bad. I told you the story in... For those of you listening, the story of um, Elevation's most recent campus, uh, the Ballantine campus, where they had the land mm -hmm. and they had to wait two years wow. to see if there was uh, the Carolina heel splitter clam or something. It was literally like a, an endangered clam species was, yeah, see, a board with different frosting. And there you go. Come those. on, Amanda. My fingers. That's what's going to dip in the frosting. <laughs> I was so curious <laughs> as to what that was. So thank you. Uh, and Kelsey says, look out. You got the hat on backwards. What so, is this? Over yeah. the top. Sylvester Stallone. We're going to arm the wrestle. Uh, the what? Sylvester you, Stallone. Kelsey said you turned your hat around backwards. Oh, that means I'm about to be to a fight. To work. Uh, so, um, just the other the other things real quick. The uh, Dining with Dignity is again October 3rd. That's the Feed the Homeless Downtown. Uh, the next blood drive is on October 6th here at the church. Come on. And then uh, I'm just going to hit the, the revival night that yes. we've been talking about. That was just going to be the praise party, but we're going to turn it into the, re the revival night. And I actually... Yesterday, um, or was it today? Yesterday or today, I think I might have gotten um, what Ooh. to study for the word for that. And I'm if super you're excited about. Not it. sure what that is. Revi the revival night is going to be Wednesday night, so there will be no family room. And actually, uh, news flash for everyone and you: we're not going to live stream it. If you want to see it you and experience it, you got to get to the building. Come you got to get to the house. So all of y'all that have been asking for a Wednesday night service, get revival in the building. night, October 9th from it says six to eight on the website. It's not going to have a time limit. Yeah. Um, I'm just gonna we're going to do worship and and the proclamation of the word. Um, Bring a and ham I'm just sandwich. gonna go. I'm just gonna go to town on that night, and we're just gonna and, and live. So 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 this is Jared unplugged. Yeah, un unplugged. Oh Lord. And Jesus. we can't. They, I could say whatever because they can't clip it up for the internet. Let's go. But yeah, there's not gonna be any live stream, um, and that's not to withhold things from people on the internet. That is to give our production team a break, uh, so they can experience the service. Um, you know, as well as they everyone else. And as probably well. uh, we probably won't even have the kids ministries or anything like that. I don't know. We haven't talked about that yet, but we'll see. That's going to be a great night. Don't miss that. I'm praying I'm for excited. that already. I saw that today and I'm like, man, that's yeah, going to be one it. of those nights. So, whoa. People YouTube who always say, off. man, we should have a Wednesday night service. Invite your friends, invite your mom and them and Pookie and Ray Ray and, them. <laughs> and bring them on and let's have a good time. It's It'll be, be good. No time limit. Let's just come to church. I'm excited about that. 
Yeah, me too. And then, uh, yeah, no, no, no time, no agenda. You know, we if we sing two songs and then step up and start preaching and then take a preach, pray, a minute prophesy. and then go back into worship. There's no telling how we're just going to let the Holy Spirit flow completely. And you know what? People were really excited about uh, last week in this service. Um, that was that was. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. The, the one that we're doing tonight, Rescue. The last. That was. By the way, that's the best series you've ever done. That was the only series I've ever done. That's why it was the best. <laughs> this sermon, this service was amazing. Uh, but what a, a lot of people commented on was the this last song that Julie Tucker did. Mm-hmm. Uh, How great thou art. Didn't miss a note. Right on key, I right on point. I gave her big props, and I'll yes, give sir. her props again. Uh, that was not planned to sing a cappella. We had, you know, everything ready to go for the band to play, and I just didn't. Yeah, you you feel put Kathy like and her right on the spot. Yeah, or I, Diane. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, I just I don't know. I was something in me, and then the entire. Uh, the big thing with the altar calls lately, God's really been breaking stuff off of people and really moving. I know the time limit has been kind of crazy and all over the thing. Um, the date for the revival night was October, what was that, 9th? 9th, October the 9th, 9th on a Wednesday, Wednesday night. night. Um, right here. But, yeah, I, and I left the altar call on the archive. That way it looks, that's why it looks like it's two hours long on YouTube. Yeah. But he was doing something and, and I just I don't know if you've ever had that where you stood there and it was just oh, yeah. like I could not end it I was and like, people think you don't know what you're doing no that's why and yeah, it's I'm weird to waiting on God validate it and that's why I was like I, I'm not sitting here thinking of what to say clearly because right. obviously I'm not really having trouble with that it was a very that, spiritual but, powerful moment and I haven't felt the Holy Spirit like that yep. in years well, I talked to you I told, afterwards Dean Moat mm-hmm. when we talked to Dean a gentleman one of our security men came to us after service sobbing, just like heaving sobs and had to talk to us. And I'm like, uh-oh, you know, something's wrong. And he said that he hadn't been in a service like that in so many years and God convicted him of a couple of things and he just wanted to talk to us about it. So that's revival. And revival's breaking out. It doesn't always look like what you thought. You know, in the church we think revival's going to look a certain way and it's going to happen a certain way and it's going to flow like this. And No way. It just, whatever God is doing, and that was a moment of revival, but yeah, I think you know a lot. I think the a big problem is um, we just, like I said, you know, and, and I've been hearing it preached a lot. Is just there's so many programs within churches that we it's like we've programmed God completely out of the entire yeah. mm-hmm. thing. Let's bring and him back. To just and I've been praying it every time. God hijacked the service, and it's Sunday working. finally, and what a way for me at least, just to the end of the series, the culmination yeah. of everything. Powerful. And I can see why um, this message, and again, for the background, uh, this was week five, episode five of the Committed series, the end of it, called Rescue out of Second Chronicles 20. That's where I initially wanted to preach, but then ended up feeling led to do a series. And I see now why, because it was just going back and building the foundation in layer and layer and layer, and then it was... Just you did renewal, exploded. relapse, rejection, and rescue. Renewal, I missed one. relapse, re- re- rejection, return, or rejection, return, return and rescue. There we go. Because every time I got up here, I kept forgetting the name, <laughs> which was weird. Uh, but yeah, so it was, oh, and I didn't see this, so I love the family room. I have so many, I had, I had three pages this time. I guess four if you count the front and back. But uh, I had, at the top of my verses, and I meant to say it, was... Um, this chapter was like, it was a prayer, prophecy, and then providence. Mm-hmm. And behind all three was worship. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was just the big thing I thought was really important was just that. And as we've been seeing that you mentioned earlier is just when revival starts and after you start turning your heart back to God and really getting dedicated and everything, that's when the retaliation comes and hell starts yes. trying to punch you right back in the face to get you to back off. Because, I mean, you know, there's so much temptation to just remain comfortable and never let your faith be stretched. Um, and it's, it's, it's weird to say, but I think you guys can understand my heart is just, and I'm not trying to like, um, put like a label on people's Christianity and their walk, but obviously the Bible says faith without works is dead. Mm -hmm. And if you're not letting God break sin off of your life and and work things out and put a revival in your heart and reignite your fire and continuing to walk forward with him and grow, Mm -hmm. I mean, do you really even have 
right. faith anymore? Or is it just you coming in and going through the motions? Well, back in the 90s, Adrian Rogers, the pastor of Second Baptist Church in Dallas, one of the most famous pastors, said, if the Holy Spirit was taken out of our churches, 95% of what we're doing would keep happening and no one would know he's gone. Yeah. And so when you have powerful moments like that where the Spirit of God is moving, um, it starts to create the atmosphere of expectation. You want more of that. It's like hunger, spiritual hunger. In physical hunger, the more you eat, the less hungry you are. But in spiritual hunger, the more you eat, the more hungry you become. There's a, have you heard of hidden hunger? I keep seeing this hidden thing, what? hidden hunger. Hmm. It's apparently, and I'm probably going to butcher this, but... <laughs> It's something with kids where you see like kids just keep eating and eating and eating, but so much of it is junk food just because there's oh, wow. no value to it. There so I just thought about that when you're saying that. It's almost like in churches, there's this hidden hunger where we come in to get fed, but we're not getting fed. There's mm-hmm. no meat. There's no potatoes. It's just well, you milk and cotton, cotton candy. Cotton candy. And yeah. that, I mean, it makes sense. There's that hidden hunger. We don't realize just how starved we have been. Yeah. Um, Powerful. Uh, and that... Uh, Brings to mind, um, I was watching a reel from that guy from 2819, <laughs> and he's passionate. If you haven't seen him, he's he's passionate, very passionate. And somebody on one of the clips, and of course, you know, it's a short, the 60-second clip that you don't see the entirety of the message, and everybody always takes everything out of context. And somebody was like, why is he angry all the time? And somebody, oh, wow. yeah. And Did you see I sent you that? What, that one? No, I sent you a thing about why he preaches like he does. I didn't see it. Okay. I'll have to find it. I'll finish it. that when you finish this. But somebody commented, um, that's, that's not anger, that's passion. Mm-hmm. And then I, for whatever reason, I chimed in too. Um, and I was like, you know, that I was like, people don't know what passion looks like anymore mm-hmm. because we're just so starved from it. We're so used to everything being boring and dry. And then this guy, he said... Um, it actually struck a conversation with the guy because he responded back, and I can't remember exactly what he said, but it was something along the lines of just like, you know, he was he was like, well, you know, I get that, something, blah, 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 but it would, there's a lot more people that are more effective without being that loud or something like that. And I chimed back, and I was like, I was like, well, that's that's personal preference. That's, yeah. And I said, that's the beauty of the Christian faith is that we're all... We're, there's there's one voice from God with many mouths, and yep. they all speak in. If if it's truly from the Holy Spirit from God, we might speak in different tones in different ways and have different deliveries. Yep. But uh, there is, um, it's just that one boss with many different departments thing. And I got like there was like three or four comments after that that was like, man, that was a really good way of putting it. The and Apostle just, Paul said there are many realize. voices, as none of them is without significance. So it happens like that. Check your inbox. I sent you this thing. Somebody asked him in an interview, why do you oh, preach like I that? I didn't watch it, but I, I saw yeah. the, I don't know. I why do you I preach started, like that? And he said, because when we stand up to deliver the word of God, in his way of looking at it, Philip Michael Mitchell, 2819 in Atlanta, he said that we are God's mouthpieces. We are his voice. And he said, I don't see God as a clown. And so he said, I don't think God is a clown, and I don't think preachers need to be acting like clowns. We need to be speaking with the gravity of the moment that we're in. And so if it comes off sounding like I'm angry, I'm not. But I believe that I'm speaking the voice of God to these people that desperately need to hear God in that moment. It was a powerful, powerful interview. And, and that reminded me of why, you know, we are the oracle. We speak as the oracles of God. So when you hear the, the word of God, it is exactly as if you are speaking uh, for God, extemporaneously for Him. I see people chiming in. Uh, I love it when revival happens organically. Amen. Praising God for blessings lately. Amen. God is at work. Y'all need to be praying because where there is opportunity, there's always going to be adversity and opposition. We are experiencing it. Jen, Kathy, you're right. Many of us are going through battles we're, we're dealing with. But the God has told us the victory is ours, so we just keep walking it out. And that brought um, the whole loud thing um, and there was another comment but I, I started thinking of uh, Revelation when John gets the vision of the glorified Jesus mm-hmm. and in Revelation 1 if you want to just write it down for the other people 
uh, verse 10, he says, On the Lord's day I was in the Spirit, and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet, which said, and it's, the words are in red, well, Jesus, write on a scroll what you see and send it to the seven churches. And, you know, you think in the Old Testament when they come up to Mount Sinai, and it's just like God's voice was so often equated with thunder, thunder. and lightning and fu- just these loud, I mean, what do you expect? It shows you, the, to me, it shows you the weakness of the contemporary church. Yes. That we have just gotten into this pattern of being entertained. We're sick of entertainment. We're sick of the entertainment culture. We're trying to strip all of that away and just be as bare bones minimum as we can. If you're looking for a church like that, that's who we are. We're just trying to get back to the basics and deliver this word clearly to the people that are hungry for it. And not every, you know, obviously not every person is going to love um that kind right. of thing. That's why, this, as long as there's you know another biblical church that you can go to, right. that's great. And you can sit under somebody that's less animated and passion. But to me, I mean, I love that that God doesn't clown around, and it's just mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I, I don't well, see you watch you watch many preachers, and it, it it almost and I know many of them. It almost feels like it's a comedy show, and yeah. you know, okay, that's okay, but. They just go over the top with it. Like, come on, man, let's get back to the let's get back yeah, to the Yeah, there's point. there's the you've got the ones that are just so boring you could fall asleep and dry, and then you've got the other side where there is the uh, entertainment kind of aspect yeah. where it's just yeah they're they're over the top, and then it's just it's more of the show mm-hmm. um, that, that stirs up the emotions. But I mean, I. I agree with that. I don't, I don't see Jesus as a clown. You know, everybody's <laughs> stuck. Actually, I heard a good one. We don't we don't worship baby Jesus. We worship the glorified Jesus. We're not worshiping holy child, meek and mild. Mm-hmm. And a lot of a lot of people, unfortunately, they just His you know want us hair. to sit back and know oh, Jesus like is, a flame just of loves fire. everybody. And it's like I mean, he's got eyes like fire, a Come loud on. voice like many trumpets. Sword comes out of his mouth. A sword comes out of his mouth. It's dividing. He rebuked his disciples, you know, get behind me, Satan. Uh, when some of them wanted to leave, he turns to the other one, and do you want to go too? too? And he's coming back and literally <laughs> coming God's back with judgment. Thing. So I don't, it's just whatever. God's doing a thing here, man. This this church is going through some, some incredible shift. And the song that you sent me today... Um, this what was that the um, the story I'll tell the story I'll tell I want us to be writing all this stuff down because I'm telling you you know there's a, there are a bunch of stories that are going to be told about about this season that yeah. we are in right now uh, that I looked back on it and I saw God you were there with me in it that's a beautiful song there's, uh, I cried there's going to be yeah. stories that are going to be told about this season right now. That people are going to tell stories of of moments that they missed in this season right now. Right now is the time for people to be pressing into God. Don't be distracted by politics and religion and foolishness, gossip and whispering. Press into God because now's the time that God is at work. And you do not want to be missing God listening to the wrong voices. Whoever has your ear right now is important. You need to be listening to the Word of God. You said five things. Can I throw them out there real quick? Yeah. Number one, they committed this problem to God because God has power over everything. Number two, God has been faithful in the past and He will be faithful in the present. Number three, God's people are powerless without Him. Number four, they praised God for His glory and took comfort in His promises. And number five, God's active presence among His people means security, victory, and freedom. Those were the elements of the prayer Mm -hmm. that Hashifat prayed. Yeah, I got, and I don't want to take full credit for that, but because that was listed in one of my study Bibles, and I was like, man, I got to. It was good. Put that in there and break that down a little bit. But it was, yeah, I mean, it was just, there's the five elements to the prayer, and. I wanted to say those because so often, and I do want to clarify something else on on prayer in a second, but so often in our prayer lives, um, we we don't know what to do, and we end up coming to God with just the laundry list of our wants and things like that, and, yep. and you know, just, Jesus God, I need this, for I me. need this, and, you know, you're turning God into your personal genie, and then you have the other side of it where... We don't really know how to pray because when you go to start and you hear all these people talk about, and Kelsey and I have mentioned it before, you know, these people that are like, oh, I sit in my prayer closet for three hours and it's like, that's cool, like, great. Yeah, but some people do some that. Some people don't know how to do that. And I had, um, <laughs> I don't. 
a conversation with the girls one night because I was talking to one of them and they were like, you know, they were like, I, I just don't know what to say. And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, it's just, it kind of feels weird. And I'm like, yeah, it is weird. Mm -hmm. And they're like, what? I'm like, it's weird. You're, you're talking, you can't see anyone. <laughs> I said, the best way, for the girls anyways, I said, the best way is think like, and oh, this is going to get clipped up. I said, think like you're talking to me and then just, just talk. Mm -hmm. I said, because God, there's God the Father. And I, was, he, I said, he knows everything about you. Everything, you know, doesn't matter. The good, the bad, the ugly, just talk to him. It doesn't matter. Just, just talk to him. And we've been working through the prayers. Um, and now they're getting to the point where they're praying, uh, every night instead of, oh. which I still say one for them and over them, obviously, but they're Come to on. the point that they're doing it. Uh, so it's that building block and that leads me to the other thought. Uh, cause Kelsey was like, she was talking to me after church about it. Cause I was talking about, if you remember the guy that was camping and how I said that she had said his prayer, his prayers were superficial. And I don't think I clarified it in the sermon. I didn't mean that like in a mean way. She didn't mean that in a, in a mean no, way, I think obviously. You, did. you said that, you said, I don't mean it like And that. it's just, <clears throat> you get, you get, I, and I, well, okay, so for, for me in my prayer life, and I've seen it just with this and just taking that full-fledged leap into boldness um, is just, until you just start doing it, mm -hmm. you don't really know how to pray. And the more you do it, obviously the easier it becomes. And then eventually, for me at least, it just like, it shifts into that just courageous, that fire, that boldness, and then eventually that also shifts into and with the Holy Spirit. Because I've noticed most of my prayers up here, once I start going, I end up feeling like I'm just standing there with my mouth open and God's just pouring things out of my lungs. And it's, I mean, Psalms 81, the, the prayers have been incredibly powerful here yep. uh, lately. And it's just, and they're not pretty. No, they don't need I love to be that. That, 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 that. They don't have to be flowery, pretty, the poetic and flowing and streaming. No, we Just don't want that. Straight from the heart. Man. And that, you know, that's like the story Jesus tells with the uh, the Pharisee where he's standing there and he's like, God, I thank you. Like, I'm not like I'm these not other, like this, guy. this guy and these poor people and all that. And there's the other, uh, the other guy that's merciful. over there just beating his breast, not able to look up because he doesn't feel worthy. Be merciful to me, a sinner. And that's, that's all God it's needs. It's exciting to watch what's going on, like with your girls, especially like just in, a quick sidebar. Uh, last week when Kelsey sent the, uh, the video to us of rehearsal, mm. I didn't know she was shooting a video of Riley. That girl's ready. I, yeah. I mean, she, I, people would disagree with me, but man, she's just... She's just worshiping and singing the song, and I'm like, she inspires people. She inspires me. I'm like, that is the way worship should be. I would, I would, uh, not that I'm condoning gambling or betting, but I would be willing to put money on it. Uh, and I don't mean this mean to anyone on the worship team, but I would say that our kids know the words <laughs> better than the praise oh, team yeah. half the time. Hey, listen. They just, I mean, they're in and out, and, and we've got Spotify on like their little phones or tablets or whatever they have, and, and they'll listen to that all the, all the time, so they know it. We haven't even asked y'all. There's a lot of people. Y'all are chiming in. Thank you for that. Chuck, he, Jesus ain't in the nice business. He's in the real business. <laughs> Come on. Hey, I'll start training on Monday. I'll see you Monday. Uh, if you had a favorite quote, if you had a favorite quote from Sunday, throw it on there. If it's something from the Word or the entire series that spoke to you, any particular sermon in that five sermon series that spoke to you, say it. Uh, this one got me. God is not going to fight what you won't face. People behind me went, ooh. I like that. I, we I did, like Evidently, we did that. too. Um, God won't fight won't, what I mean, you he's won't not. face. And that, was, and that goes too with the, we want God to just, you know, oh, we sit here and we're like, oh, the, the battle is God's, it's not mine. Yeah, but then a lot of people take that out of context and they think that they don't have to do anything. Do anything. And then they don't even do the baseline of praying about it. Mm -hmm. And they're just sitting there that, oh, this is a God's battle. And I don't, you know, and it's, they, they take the, uh, like the stand firm and see or be still and know. And it's like, no, you, you still got to pray. You still mm -hmm. got to trust, trust God and have faith. And that's why I wanted to point that out as well. Like they, they still had to go face it. God told them what to do. He told them they were going to get delivered. He told them where to find them. But, you know, I mean... I don't know about you, but I would still think that as they're walking up there and praising and everything, they're still in the back of your head like, We're gonna man, this is, a, this is a little crazy. <laughs> I mean, think about it's it. Like if, 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 
if you were in the military right now and you were yeah. getting, or let's just say, I'll, I'll just go extreme because I like to go to extremes. It's, it's right after 9-11 and you're getting deployed to go to Iraq and you get a thing from God that just says, hey, just praise me, the whole enemy, I'm going to take care of it, don't worry about it. Mm-hmm. You know on the whole flight over there, and if even you know while you're doing it and trusting him, there's still a party that's like, this is nuts. Okay. Oh, boy. I'm like, God, I'm trusting you, but... Uh, and, and I think that's a good thing that people also need to understand is God's not afraid of your doubts. He's Amen. not afraid of your questions. Not at all. Uh, a lot of people want to withhold, like, asking God, and it's just like, man... Because he knows you're thinking it. We're all children yeah. to God. We're not, oh, man, there was another good sermon from uh, Philip Anthony Mitchell at 2019 about the, the childlike of faith. He didn't call us to be childish. He childlike. called us to be childlike. And he, he pointed out, and I never thought about it, he said, nowhere in the Bible are you referred to as an adult. Never. You're always you're referred to as a child of God. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, man, and he's like, and you think, too, like, children, he's like, children ask questions. Adults, we just, and I can't remember if he said it or if Stephen Furtick said it, he was like, as adults, you just, you stop asking questions ex- externally, but you're wondering about it internally. And it's like, you have to realize, man, God's not afraid of that. It's okay to ask him and bring your struggles I mean, and, to And him. asking questions is a great way to learn. I mean, you, you can't learn a thing if you don't ask a question. Yeah, exactly. Kerry Garrett, but God. You really pushed in on that one pretty good. But God. That was a good series because you it came up with a bunch of things really one good. back back to back. Something, um, but God, what really blessed me, and I don't know what I was expecting, so I don't even know if it went correctly. But the whole, I was telling you about it, how I felt like I had that charge to challenge people mm-hmm. and to take that 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 shift like forward, and that's when I had everybody stand up and and practice the praise. Uh, that was good, and it was man, that was. Powerful. Were you nervous that it wasn't going to work? I didn't. I don't know. I didn't know what to expect. I was just like, <laughs> let's just do it. And then yeah. I, I guess beforehand, it's like, because you don't know. You're like, how am I supposed to do this? Like, how is this going to go? Like, you know, like what? What am I even supposed to do here? And then you just get to that part. I got to my note, and all I have written down there is it says verse 19, praise, and then it, I put loudly, but not mm-hmm. right beside it and underlined it. So you didn't have that plan. You didn't have that. Plan. I had. An idea. I knew I wanted to get people to stand up and, and shout, but I didn't know how that was going to go or how it was going to feel. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then I wanted to point out how, for some people, obviously, it would be uncomfortable mm-hmm. because for a lot of people, we just, they don't come in and, and raise their hands. And they, don't, they don't clap during worship. They want to, ooh, they want to... Um, white knuckle it. The white knuckle it. And, man, I heard another good one today about how... We, we put more um, respect on man because we'll show up early for work, show up on time for Woo! work, but we'll want to show up after the first song for church. Even preachers do that. Big time preachers come walking in while the song's going. Uh-uh. And I heard that, and I was like, man, that's a really good point. And I wrote it down. I'll have to bring it up, but it's just that, like... You've been working for months to change the culture here. And I will not stop. (laughs) Don't stop. Keep going. Change the culture. Showing up on time. Being in the building. Get here early. Have some coffee. Meet some people. Have some conversation. Don't do that thing of waiting along. Jared, being real, I'm not here to fluff your feathers. No. (laughs) <laughs> there's 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 no there's no point in it and like that like how I've harped in on the the cotton candy Christianity thing just there's God never called us to be comfortable he oh, calls man. us to be consecrated he literally calls us to be set apart mm-hmm. and somehow we're okay with jumping up and down and uh, for some people, like at concerts, you go to a secular yeah. concert, they're jumping up and down, you're drinking, you're raising your hands, pretty much in an act of worship towards those people. And not to get too graphic, but some people are stripping down and throwing things at the band. But as soon as we come in on Sunday, we just expect to just sit here, sit here and I will be dignified. everything from God. As if we equate that with dignity, dig- dignified. I see Kathy yeah. use the word undignified. Uh, I will be even more undignified, David said. I love that. You just keep pushing and changing the cultures, especially digging in on comfort and being comfortable. I've confessed this to the family and to the family room uh, that I hit a stride where I got comfortable and I was just happy to be there. 62 years old, church is doing great, just enjoying life and heading out for the pasture. And and then you say, well, let's go buy a pasture. (laughs) 
It's just changed everything. It's the, the, the comfortable is over, and it's a new season. We're excited about it. Man, I, I know for obviously for some people, getting shifted out of that comfort zone is not fun. It's not fun for anybody. No. I mean, it's not fun for me. It wasn't for me. It wasn't for me. No. I'm so used to typing up a whole thing on an iPad and stressing out the entire week, and then to come up here and go, hey, I don't know how this, this was the first sermon in the series. You know, I don't know how this is going to go. I don't know what to expect. I have barely any notes and then just preach for an hour and 48 minutes. And it's like, that's not comfortable. And then to get up here every single week with just a little bit. And it's like, it's the same thing every week. I'm writing it out and I get up or I get close to getting up here and you're like, is this even enough? How am I going to make this into an hour? And then once you get going and the Holy Spirit flows through how can you, I keep this down and then it an turns hour. into, how can I stop? At an hour. <laughs> Another quote that you gave, and, and it was about the series, uh, the sermon was rescue. That your point was that God will come through and rescue you in that situation. God's got it. Just because you got to face it doesn't mean you got to fight it. I love that. That's great. Yeah, I don't know where Just you because, got it. I mean, no, it was the same. That's the fantastic. Same. It was, I wrote down, God won't fight what you won't face. And then the next thing that had came to me was to shift it to drive the point even further home was just because you have to face it doesn't mean you have to fight it. That's powerful. I mean, the battle is God's, but you've still got to face it. You still got to get it. to the battlefield. That's yeah. something Scott had told us from the beginning with the stuff mm-hmm. that we're dealing with. And he's like, man, he's like, we, we haven't even gotten to the battlefield yet. And as soon as you hear something like that, you're like, oh, that makes sense. Like we're expecting when you're in it, and things start coming at you, you think that's the battle. No, that's just like the little arrows that are coming in and like the, the bad comments or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you still got to go into the room and face this thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you think like that when people say something like, oh, you got to face your demons. Well, yeah, yeah. how are you going to let God deal with your sin mm-hmm. if he doesn't reveal anything to you? And then you've got to confront it headstrong, head on. And, you know, that's what like denying the flesh and crucifying the flesh is. You can't just... The, you know, it doesn't just wipe away and then you never have to deal with it. You still have those temptations and, and it's that's why temptation isn't the sin. Sin is acting on the temptation. And what I really wanted to drive home with the, the thing of the whole like um, the battle being God's was just how I wanted to really make sure that, you know, the, the people saw that praise and worship is what went out first. Because, mm-hmm. and I think that's a powerful thing and that's, well, you saw it Sunday I sat here right after music practice and, and gave them a little pep rally and a speech because it's just, for, I think for a lot of people, we don't realize how strong our praise and our worship mm-hmm. truly is. And actually, um, something else that, that was kind of a blessing to me was uh, Tanya had said, and I, don't, I hope you're not mad at me for saying this, but just how, because I didn't think about it either. A lot of people, you don't realize that praise and worship are two different things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it was nice um, to explain that um, in, a, in a sense that people can understand because that's the tough thing is you can it's easy to get into the, the, the routine of standing up here and you think you're only preaching to the church so you use church lingo mm-hmm. and you often or we often forget not you necessarily but pastors we just tend to forget that there's, there's atheists in the room there's people that are struggling with it there's people that are new to the faith and you throw something out and they don't even know what that word means. And if you don't take the time every now and again to explain what that is, you know, how are you helping people grow? So mm-hmm. I think what God's really helping me with lately is just, and something I want to start taking forward is just just teaching through the Bible mm-hmm. instead of just, you know, coming, because it's one thing to, you know, you can get a word and preach on it and all that, but just to, to walk through and let it marinate mm-hmm. within us and just dive deep and go deeper and deeper and deeper because... Jesus is the well, and we're so used to just skimming and swimming on the surface that we never realize, you know, we got to plunge deep into this thing. Well, people are enjoying that. Alana, I just happened to glance over and saw your comment, re-entering the church at 43, really enjoyed your direct preaching that fire shots and touches places you don't realize are vulnerable. People are loving that. Uh, I think that's one of the things that people are loving about you uh, in particular right now. Uh, I said this a couple of weeks ago. I don't think I said it publicly. I said it privately to you that when I was a younger man, uh, one time I was asking my pastor about why I, I was called. And, you know, he said that, well, God called the other ones, but they said no. So now he's calling the other ones. And 
people like you, me, your direct nature is really refreshing to people right now. You're not polished. Don't ever get polished. You're not <laughs> professional. Don't ever get professional. We have enough polished professional preachers, but we still have an apostate church. And so what's necessary is for God to raise up some Elijahs and some John the Baptist with a fire in their bones to just speak the truth and let the uh, rest of it just go to the wayside. Um, I, I was taught, I was sitting in a hospital room today visiting with someone, and he said that his girlfriend came a few weeks ago, this Sunday, <laughs> the last Sunday that I preached, like a year ago, and <laughs> <laughs> said that I said something about um, homosexuality. And when they walked out, she said, he's preaching hate. And, and he was like, no, no, not at all. It's, it's the exact opposite. If you're preaching the truth, you're telling people that out of love and trying to help them. And so that's what, you know, that's what the cornerstone of what you're doing is, is being direct, going straight to the point, uh, not, not sparing people's feelings. You're not polished. You're not professional. Keep it up. There's no, and, and this comes off harsh, but there, there's no... To a degree, because you could be coarse for just the sake of being right. coarse and, and being that's rash, not, and that's not that's not what I'm trying to do, and I don't I don't intend to do that. Um, I do I know some of the things I say, uh, some people disagree with, or it hits really heavy, but I do choose my words. Uh, I do weigh things, and a lot of times before I say something that's maybe is going to come across harsh or mm -hmm. coarse. I, you'll see me pause because I'm wrestling with it just like the whole, not to bring it up, but the whole pipe comment from a couple weeks ago. If you watch it, I paused, I wrestled with it, and you know somebody will say, oh, well, you're just listening to the wrong voice. No, something literally, I just felt the Holy Spirit was just, you got to say it. Because well, there are people sitting there that speak that language. Exactly. Well, and that's the thing is you'll sit here and we'll get mad at a pastor for saying like, Shh, I don't know. Damn. I wasn't about to, huh? Damn. Yeah. You know, or I heard a preacher the other day in the middle of his sermon. He, he used the word damn. Anything like that. And people gasp, and it's like, it's it's a word. It's in the But Bible. then they'll go out there, and they'll be saying F this, F that, right. as they're trying to get out of the parking lot. It's like, right. my whole thing is, we're dealing with real world problems, real hell in the world, real hell coming against you. And it's like, Christians just want to curl up into a fluffy little ball and have their security blanket on it blanket on them and it's like dude hell's not stopping coming against no. you and if you're going to do anything in life that's worthwhile and do something for the faith you've got to fight like hell to beat hell right. that's why Jesus told you told us to be uh, what is it wise as serpents mm -hmm. you've got to you've got to know their strategy and sometimes uh, well I think you can understand what I'm saying use their strategy against them if you will mm -hmm. um, and it's you know for some people that they, they don't want to hear that but for others it's like man I'm dealing with some heavy stuff yeah. and if you say something in my language and I can click with it better than you know you taking right. the time to fluff it up and make it pretty and then I completely miss the point well I mean what's the wow. use for centuries the, the Catholic Church no offense spoke nothing but Latin well, yeah, nobody, never it, any idea. nobody knew what they were saying. So if you speak a direct language that they can understand and hear, you've accomplished the purpose. It fills buildings, it empties buildings. The Bible says that great crowds came to see what John Baptist had to hear and say, or say. So that's what's going to happen. The people that are hungry It'll, for that. It, it will fill buildings. Um, yeah. And obviously it does empty, but... The only time it empties it is it empties the people that just want to stay stagnant. Yeah. And they want to stay dead in their faith. And they don't want to be challenged. They want to stay comfortable. We've seen it. Man, I, don't, I feel like i got to say this. is just if you're so focused on being comfortable here in this life, you're going to be really uncomfortable in the next life, in eternity. Because okay. you're going to be so focused on trying to remain where you are and not do anything that's uh, putting pressure on you, not do anything that stretches your faith. And I just feel like there's going to be a lot of people that have spent this life trying to be comfortable in their Christianity and they're going to stand before Jesus and he's going to be, one of those is going to be, you know, the depart from me, I never knew you because you just wanted to remain silent, remain quiet and do nothing to further the kingdom because you were too scared to open your mouth, Come on. Uh, scared to get canceled, scared to have somebody get mad at you. Man, I... I don't. Uh, I don't care about feelings. There's. I don't care about like. It's good to care. get hurt. 
It's good to get hurt in church because that's conviction yeah. to a degree. I mean, there's no hey, sense in like 28, 19, he preached the thing of the, don't be offensive for the sake of being offensive. The Jesus says that. There's no sense in just purposely being offensive in order to, that would hurt someone. But it's like, man, if we're not getting convicted, we're not growing. And conviction hurts. Conviction sucks. Nobody wants to <laughs> sit there and be like, hey, you're that, doing this wrong. You need to work on this. That, right. Then you're like, ow, that, that, you know, well, I didn't realize that. Tell but me how that nice teaches I am. you to grow. Like Mitch said uh, earlier about the, if your kid's running into traffic, yeah, you know, you're gonna hey, correct them, hey, and then you know hey. your kid will be like, "Ah, why don't you let me do?" And it's like, "Well, because you're about to get flattened by a semi, right? If you run out there, come on." Um, one thing I want to hit really quick because I didn't bring it up Sunday, and I wanted to make sure to bring it up tonight. I and I don't think I brought it up. Um, I had just recently, the other night, um, on YouTube, somehow it popped up right before the week before this sermon or the week of whatever. Uh, preparing was the International House of Prayer. Mm -hmm. I had completely, and I feel like a lot of people have completely forgotten about that. Yeah. Uh, founded in, I think, 1999, it says. I don't know the exact date, but it's Google been a it. Long time. Uh, Google it. The International House of Prayer. Mike For those Bickle. of you that don't know what it is, because I had f completely forgotten it. And I wanted to bring it up, and I hope somehow this part gets clipped up or this family room goes viral or whatever, put this in front of somebody famous if you know them. We need to make that famous again. Um, if you don't know what the International House of Prayer is, it started in, I want to say 1999. I don't think it was 91. And I remember hearing about it. Mm -hmm. And basically what it is, is now it's live on YouTube. The stream never ends. It is a room where 24-7 they praise and they worship God and they will not stop until Jesus comes back and then newsflash, we're all going to keep doing it for all of eternity. So it's really never going to end. But man, I would love to, get, apparently you can go visit it too. Mm -hmm. And I would love to go see it because I can't even fathom. I'm looking at it right now. 24-7 since 1999. Can you imagine how thick with how thick the Holy Spirit felt in this room Sunday. 1999. I can't imagine how that room must feel just because it has not stopped since 1999. Um, so Even I want to find a way to attack. put that famous again. That huh? came under attack too, that whole I'm ministry. sure. Yeah, 25 years. I remember hearing about it and it's like back then, you know, you hear, oh, they're starting up this thing where they're going to praise, they're going to worship 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They'll do it in shifts. And I remember thinking back then, like, how is that even possible? How, yeah. how, are, how are they going to do that? That's never going to work. But they haven't stopped. And I think 9,138 awesome. days, 19 hours, 16 minutes, and 50 seconds. That is They've got a clock. They've got a clock. That runs, that I think you. that is awesome. <laughs> so I want to go visit it. International wow. House of Prayer. I, I really think we need to make that famous again and, and just blow it up. Because the YouTube... I mean, it has stuff going, but every time I've clicked on it in the last couple of days, I haven't seen what about enough numbers. What about at the new land out there building a prayer? Just chapel? leave it on, huh? Just yeah, just leaving it on that that channel. Have a prayer chapel, yeah. put it on that channel where people. That's where they come and go for prayer. And that remind that makes me think of. Um, uh, I think it's the Brooklyn Tabernacle. Whoever yep. I don't remember Jim Simbola. Yeah, yeah, him. And and he has, they started prayer, and they do it in shifts, mm -hmm. and it never stops. Even while he's preaching, there's people in the other room praying. They they literally never stop praying. You know, Full Gospel awesome. Church in Seoul, Korea, David Yonggi Cho started that back way back. It was the world's largest church at one time, 750,000 members, 24-hour uh, a day. Uh, they had what they call prayer mountain. They had a mountain where people went to pray. And... It was powerful. I think it's We've great. gotten away so, from it. No I, just, I wanted to bring that up and mention it to you guys and whoever else listens to this. Because there's so many you know, different worship songs and whatever and blah, blah, blah that you can put on and just listen to whatever. I, I think it would be really cool if just whoever, if we started blowing up that YouTube again and, and making it famous just because of what it is. And you know, if you're leaving the house and you want to leave just that on on the TV so it's playing in your house. Oh, wow. I mean, yeah. imagine what that could do for the feeling of your home to just have Amen. the Holy Spirit having Jesus and, and you know having God just be worship, worshipped every moment of every hour of every day within your home. I mean, think of what that could do for your life and you know, you come home and you feel it 
uh, you know, or if you're stuttering, or stuttering, if you're studying, or whatever, just putting that on in the background instead of your typical worship music, yeah. you know, just because it's literally never ended since 1999. On. That's, I don't know, I just, I felt like I, I was supposed for to bring here, it up. For us here, what's next? Uh, rain, apparently. Oh, yeah. what that sounds like. Yeah, that's a band of rain. Um, no, for, for us here, we just got Sunday uh, coming up, and as I end this series, I'm already working on the next one. Is this Sunday, October the 6th, or? No, this Sunday is the... The 29th. 29th, okay. yeah. It's the I was gonna fifth say, Sunday should, of the month. supposed to be one more I'm Sunday. Completely oh, uh, I think communion's this Sunday, too. Yes. We wouldn't want to you know, miss that and leave that out. We will not miss that. <laughs> We're going <laughs> to set that up and do that. So, obviously, the church is in a great season, a wonderful season, a season of growth. Um, and I want to take the time to make sure we mention just, you know, we're thankful for your giving, obviously, with the land and everything that we have going on with just your Amen. continued support, with just everything the church is doing. Um, I'm thankful for the people that, the new people that are getting in Man, and teams immediately are getting plugged up. Yeah, that's what the I was about to say. The teams are growing. They're growing. If you haven't found a spot to serve yet, security, do something. Your worship team is growing. Ooh. Yeah. So that's what's one of the strange things that's happening right now. Uh, as seasoned people are kind of, you know, finding their way to do different things, your young new people that are stepping in are, are coming in with that attitude, I, I want to serve. And we've got musicians that are starting, singers that are starting, people that want to do a production. Uh, so now's a good time. Jump in. Now is the involved. perfect time. We've got people truly pressing in and getting behind the vision. And uh, it, God is shifting the culture. Join us in, in-house if you can. If you have the opportunity to be here. We, we watch it online and it's good, but there's nothing like being in the house. Come fill the building. Sit in the seats. Feel the, feel the spirit that's going on here right now. Those of you that come every Sunday, invite somebody. Just throw it out on your Facebook page. And invite somebody. Hey, join us in church. You never know what an invitation will do. 86% of the people that come to church come because some Somebody invited him. Exactly. Uh, some people are just waiting for you to say, "Hey, I'm going to church. Would you like to go?" It's uh, it's it's a lot with the 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 testimonies that I'm having poured in, the the prayer requests that I'm having poured in. It's going uh, on. And and today I went to St. Augustine High School High School for the um, see you at the poll thing. Um, which it, for some reason is only once a year, which I think is yeah, insane. September. I don't know why we don't do it more. Once a month at least. But um, you might want to spearhead. I'm ready to uh, to get involved with that. The board game, yes. Uh, somebody, Julie, is Friday night. Friday night, at yes. What time? Friday is six thirty. Uh, right here. Let me bring a um, six o'clock. September twenty seventh. Bring o'clock. a board, a charcuterie board of some kind, a frosting board, or a s'mores board, or a meat board, or and then some games, a board game of some kind to come and play. We're going to meet in the event room. I think so, yeah. So park on that east side of the building. And they're putting, the, I'm pretty sure we're doing a movie. Yeah, they're doing a movie the for, the for the kids. So, so if you, you have, have children, let them come. They can hang out. And if they don't want to play board games, they can watch a movie. Exactly. But with Friday that, night. I'm ready to get out here and get Let's some dinner. Go. go see Kelsey because her phone probably died. Uh, we, we love you guys. We're glad that you've joined us. Again, we'll see you Sunday. Come early. It starts at 10, but you want to get here before it starts uh, because eventually it's going to get to the point where you're so set coming. I don't mean this mean, but you're so set coming in late that you're going to end up not being able to come in at all you're and you're going to not be able to find a seat because of what God is starting to do in this place. And Ow. some of the people ain't going to believe that, but I'm watching other churches that are blow up, blowing up and grow and people are getting there. <laughs> people are getting there two to three hours early just to be wow. able to get a parking spot in order to get into the building. Let's go. And they've That's got the two overflow rooms. In the move so of God. Let's believe God, that. God's moving. America is, uh, it might look like it's in a bad place now, but God's getting ready to pour out Amen. his spirit all over again. Amen. With that, we'll see you guys Sunday. Have a great rest of the week. <laughs> Hey, I hope that message spoke to you today. I want to say thank you to everybody who is involved at Family Church and those who help support this ministry. If you would like to get more involved, you can click the link in the description or head to our website, familychurch.social. We would love to connect with you, and you can find all of our social media platforms on our website. Also, if this message spoke to you in any way today and you liked it, consider sharing it on your social media in any way that you would like so that we can help reach those far from God and return them to the arms of the Father. We want to see God work through you. We love you. Thanks again for listening. God bless you.